sooner the gospel is being preached. And that's all that matters. That we go out and preach the good news of God. We go out and tell people about the love of Christ. We go out and tell people what Christ has done for us in our lives. And along the way, the most important thing that we have to do is keep our eyes fixed on him. If that is our true heart and our desire, there is nothing that can touch you. There is nothing that can harm you. They can stone you to death. Keep your eyes fixed on Jesus. I love it. Because this results in, you see, persecution results in spreading the gospel. When persecution comes, that means the gospel is being preached. People are getting saved. People are coming to Christ. Listen, if you're going to get that persecution, you know you're doing something right. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Christians went and they told people about the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what we're meant to do about Christians. We're not meant to go around gossiping about is this or she said that or who's doing that or who's doing this. We're meant to be telling people about the love of Christ. Maybe persecution was necessary at this point to make them obey the Lord. Who knows? Anyway, what we do know is it resulted in blessing for many who heard, gave their life to Christ. That's what it's all about. That we go out and tell people the good news, the simple gospel. One of the deacons chosen in chapter 6 to look after the money of the church, Stephen, was killed. Another, Philip, is now seen going to the city of Samaria and preaching. Again, the Lord gave special miracles and many of the Samaritans believed. This resulted in great joy. Listen, friends, brothers, sisters, our main job and role is to preach the good news of the gospel. If anybody doesn't know what they're called to do, no, you heard it on this platform tonight. That we're called to preach the good news and the gospel. If anybody's confused about their calling, first and foremost, number one, we're called to preach the gospel. We're called to tell people about the good news. We're called to tell people what Christ has done for us. Questions, comments, anyone, before we move on? Chloe, go ahead, sister. Yes, Mike, I just wanted to, to um, comment on, you know, how, he, he, how, the, um, how they were scattered um, and they were to preach the word wherever they went um, and just identifying how out of, yeah, that must have been really out of their comfort zones, you know, just to be scattered apart from one another, you know, what they're used to, what they're known, and really go into the wilderness and preach. Um, just, you know, God's, God's likes to, um, you know, he likes to get us to that next level, but it always feels uncomfortable to begin with. We always have to go through a bit of an uncomfortable stage before we, before we go to that next level of, um, of that relationship or our calling with him. Amen. Amen. So we see 
the enemy coming in like a flood, corruption, division. We see it in the case here of Saul, assenting to the death of Stephen, the organized persecution as an answer to the gospel, the insincerity of those who pretended to accept wise counsel, but their real cowardice is not venturing to be decided a reign to the priestly power against the new sect. So we see, coming to you, Leon, one second, we see that on one hand, there were some people who were thinking, why? Well, Jesus has just been killed and, you know, you know, maybe these Jewish leaders were right. And then the gospel has been preached. We see the double-mindedness of the people. Maybe the Jews are right. You know, they've just got rid of one. So, And then, then you see what's going on with the enemy coming in like a flood. Because you've got to remember, you know, um, these people killed Jesus. So they're not just going to, the, the, the high priest particular, what's his name, Carthus, he's not just going to sit around. He's thinking, hold on, I've just killed Jesus. And I've got this guy, Stephen, and I've got loads of people preaching this same gospel. So you've got a crowd and a lot of people that are double-minded in the sense that because they don't know where to go. These are the same crowd. These are the same people, you know, only a few months ago, were going free Barabbas. So we saw, you know, uh, the, 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 the prevalence of that in, 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 in um, when Jesus was coming in, rolling into the town in, 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 in the donkey, you know, and they were going and they were laying the carpets down in palm trees, Palm Sunday. A few days later, they're saying, kill him. So we've got these, the same people now, all of a sudden, the gospel has been preached again because they must have thought Jesus is gone. The gospel has been preached again. People are getting saved. People are getting healed. People are coming to Christ. Look at the scenario. People are getting saved. So when God moves, you know, somebody out of the way or moves somebody on or moves them into a different country or moves them into a different direction, the gospel is still being preached. People are getting saved. People are hearing the gospel. People are being delivered. People are being healed. People are coming to Christ. That's what draws people. That's what we need to focus on. Yes, Leon. God bless you. Over to you. Yeah, I just wanted to come in, into agreement. Uh, you know, everything that's been spoken within the uh, the preaching of the word, but see when he said about Philip went down to the city of uh, Samaria and preached Christ to them, you know, from that moment there and then, you know, Jesus was a son of man. And, and, and that's what they needed to know, that he was a son of man. He's a son of God. But also he is the Messiah. But also um, in that, continuing in what Philip was hearing and seeing, but the miracles was held. But, you know, with the uh, unclean spirits that were coming out, but he said about the, the loud voice, that loud voice came out. But he said many who uh, possessed, yeah, was, you know, uh, many who were paralysed and lame and healed. But then he said that there was a great joy in the city, yeah, it was in that place of the city there and then. But as you know, many were 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 being baptized. So they said, you know, that he says you must be baptized in the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. But with that also saying this, man is the great power of God. But it was like the power of God came in. So we know that there's power in the name of Jesus, but also those who are getting healed with you know, when they're getting baptised, they're, they're, they're living the resurrected life of what Christ done for us on the cross. So it's representing everything that he done for us, for those that were getting saved. And, you know, that's that's where the power is, you know, in the baptism where, 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 where they come to the kingdom, you know, and uh, this is what they believed, you know, and this, this, this is like believing in Jesus as a Lord and Saviour. But he said that, you know, he's preached the things concerning to the kingdom of God, the name of Jesus. You know, it's in the name of Jesus. But also, he said, both men and women are baptised. But Simon, he said, Simon also believed, but he was baptised. And it continued 
and it continued. But there was amazed, and that amaze amazement was there. But you know, we're not, still in, that yet, Leon. we're not in that yet. We're in verses one to yeah, eight. Yeah, I know, but that's where that's where I was at from that. Anyway, um, I mean, you've gone, you've gone on when we haven't read. It was one to eight, wasn't it? One to eight. You're in nine. You're going right. nine. You're in nine going forward. Right, so the loud voice that was spoken, yeah, it came out of many, yeah, that know that those were oppressed. But he shows that what we call to do is command, like command them to come out, but also like preach that Jesus is healer, you know, he heals that it's in the name of Jesus. Amen. But you know, that 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 joy comes in with the Holy Spirit. The joy, that was it. That was the final bit. Well done. Good joy. That Amen. Good. Amen. 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 We're gonna go into Simon's. So Malcolm, over to you. Yeah, I was just I was just noticing how um <laughs> how God used Saul there uh, because I know they went off causing havoc, but in verse four it says, Therefore, those who were scattered went mm. everywhere to preach in the word. Amen. One action produced many going out to preach the word. Amen. So verse four, let's look at that verse four, because that's a key point. Well done. So therefore, those who were scattered went everywhere preaching the word. So we got Philip, yeah? So the first fight, and the first thing that we need to, to be in is the word. Therefore, they were all scattered abroad, and it pleased God by the foolishness of preaching preaching to save the world. So the church needed to be taught by discipline. Discipline? Yeah, I know we don't like that word. By discipline in the word of God. So preaching the word of God functions of the Christian church, and the word that was preached is the word that was given. The apostles gave it the preemnity. It was given by what? Can someone tell us who it was given to us by? Jesus. Yes, it was given to us, Jesus, but I'm going to give it, I'm going to be a bit more specific. Part of the Trinity. Holy Spirit. Thank you. Spirit. Thank you. Very important. Very important that we are Holy Spirit led. We see here that these guys, they're anointed with the Holy Spirit. They're not going on a bit of zeal. They're not going out on a bit of whim because they know what they're going to come up against. They know they're going to come up against opposition. They're going to come up against persecution. They're going to come up against attack and they need to know how to stand. And you can only do that if you've got the spirit of the Lord inside of you. Jeb, over to you. Yeah, I was just going to add like that is very important because i've found sometimes i can have like maybe i can have the passion to evangelize but without the wisdom or the leading of the holy spirit you can be led into a situation that you're going do you know what i mean off your own passion rather than the holy spirit um but it, it said what kind of stood out to me is um going back to verse one when it said that great wave of persecution began and then in, in verse four, where they were all scattered um, through that persecution, God was still fulfilling his purposes. So sometimes it may look like we're losing things in the natural, we're losing things, but it's all to fulfill God's purpose. So it just kind of stood out to me that we don't know where he's leading us or where we're going to go, but we have to trust that. And it's just, that's just like preached to me because I'm, very much like oh my god in the natural i'm comparing myself to sometimes worldly standards but actually this is all to fulfill god's greater purpose Amen. um and the other thing was when he sent out philip philip was a, a jew and he went to preach in samaria but the jews and the samarians had hatred for each other but he, st he sent him there to preach um and it just reminds me like you know Paul when he was called to preach he and from his own understanding 
he was convinced that he would have to preach to the Jews because he was a Jew himself and he understood the Jews, but he was sent elsewhere to preach. So sometimes we might think we know what God wants us to do because we might have the intellect and the knowledge or the know think we have the know-how, but it might not. Yeah, so it's all the leading of the Holy Spirit. Basically. Lean not on your own understanding at all. You need the spirit. You, you know, if you ain't if you ain't got the spirit, then if you're in the spirit, you're following the spirit. We follow the spirit of the living God. You know, so we have to trust in the Lord and lean quite correctly, not on our own understanding. But if we're in the spirit, we're led by the spirit. If we talk about many scriptures, you know, know that whether you're led by the spirit or whether you're led by the flesh, you know that because you 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 you're in the spirit of discernment james yeah this is like advanced step seven stuff in it <laughs> advanced step seven mate i like that <laughs> i like that so either you're operating in your defects or you're operating in your assets <laughs> yeah 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 and then you've got the humility and the grace to love and understand and then you've got the wisdom to know the difference. And then you can take full responsibility by looking at what happens. Then you can be in your relationship with God in step 11 in prayer and meditation. That's also important. Then we go and, and preach the gospel, carry the message. But we as Christians, our responsibility is to carry the good news. So it says universal responsibility for each and every single one's coming to you, Malcolm, is spreading the truth. The true concept of the church, which is a body of believers, that we believe and therefore speak, possession, that the word is responsibility. So the leadings of providence are true guidance of spiritual activity. So we will see it's dangerous to anticipate divine preparation, as in, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. No, you're going to be led by the Holy Spirit. No, you're going to pray about this before you actually go out there and do it. No, you're going to plan, ask God, and be guided and directed. So that's the difference between I'm going to do and divine preparation. We watch, we watch in the night for the darkest hours precede the dawn. We keep a true and firm center from which and what way to go or which way to turn. Sometimes we don't know. We're in, a, we're in a bit of, do I go here or do I go there? The only way you're going to know is when you're in prayer, when you take that time to stop and ask your father in heaven, what do you want him to do? And he will tell you. He might not tell you straight away. And this is why I love what my, my brother James just said, advanced step seven stuff, because we're going to need the principles. We're going to need patience. We're going to need tolerance. We're going to need faith. We're going to need trust. We're going to need willingness. All of these spiritual principles that we should have and works between our one to seven. And the most important one of that is that we need to be honest with ourselves. Are we ready? Malcolm, over to you. I just... Um... Just thinking about what Gemma said there about uh, being basically, uh, uh, you know, you have a plan and, and the spirit intercedes. That's exactly what's happened with me, isn't it? I was on one path when I first joined here. Where was I headed? Amen. Ordination. Well, no, that hasn't happened. Instead, I'm here with you. I'm blessed. Or you are. I don't know. Uh, and I'm in the church plans. That's what the spirit has done. That's what's really intervened, isn't it? That's what's happened. And there's plenty for me to learn here about the spirit. But I knew this, I knew that I knew that I knew it was spiritual. I knew there's something prompting me, but I thought this is the direction then, but it wasn't. Amen. Amen. Spirit led. Thanks, Gemma. And it's beautiful. You know, and you're all there for a reason. Oh, for, oh. I firmly believe that. We're all there to grow and learn and understand. And, um, you know, move. You know, walk. Come here with you, sister. 
Oh, yeah, when you were talking about um, sometimes we don't know which way to go. Whenever I've been in that place and I'm like, God, which way do I go? And he just clearly just says, I am the way. So it's just just keep seeking his face and he will show you the way. It's just always, it's always Jesus. That's the way. Amen. Amen. Jesus is, that's the way. It's always Jesus. That's the way. I love that, Chloe. It's always, you know. You're getting stoned to death, look to Jesus. They're calling you a lunatic, look to Jesus. They're calling you a nutter, look to Jesus. They're calling you whatever, look to Jesus. God, maybe there might be something in it. There might be something in it, but look to Jesus. He'll tell you. We have to keep our eyes fixed on Christ. Nothing else. Christ-centered. Christ first, Christ in the middle, Christ last. Nothing before, nothing after. Christ center of christ centered it's really important what we're seeing here we're seeing the meaning of christ centeredness i cannot put nothing before christ and when i see myself in that place because sometimes the ego can can have its way of manifesting in many different ways and you can see yourself oops rein it back in go to god Bring it back in line. We can see the flesh popping out, rein it back in, Christ-centered, might even have to do a bit of repentance, back in line. Has to be Christ-centered. It cannot be Gemma-centered, Iva-centered, Chloe-centered. Cannot be. And once it is, we know flesh has taken over. Flesh self-will, whatever we want to call it. We can use many different words. You know, it's good that we've got the recovery forum in there because we can understand and we can identify when the actor wants to start running the show again. So we see here, which is another true thing, is that God is, is not the author of confusion. We've got to remember here, look, the universal responsibility, we know that God is not the author of confusion, and we know that the greatest activity and need is not to break up order. Revivals, evangelistic aggression should always maintain a rallying point. It should seek out quiet resting places where we can go and seek. Let God appoint the peace amongst us. Let God be in control. If we're not in that place of peace and we're promoting div division, gossip, and all that, we know that the enemy's in. It's come to mash up and diverse his church. We've got to know. Sometimes we're own, we're own, we, we are our own worst enemies. Good to see you, Sean. We're our own worst enemies. I know I can be a nightmare, mate. My step, my step work will tell me that. No one is exempt. And if we're putting people on pedestals, then we really are in trouble. James, carry on. You got your hand up. Yeah, this, this, you know, we're, we're given a spirit of... Uh, love and of a soul mind aren't we amen amen fruits of the spirit galatians this is what we need to produce good fruit so yeah mm -hmm. might take longer than others but we need to be aspiring to love to be patient to be meek to be understanding to be compassionate, all those things. Put it this way, right? You want to see some form of transformation in your life, don't you? Mm. Nobody wants to be in step two. Repeat the same mistakes, expecting different results. Repeat the same mistakes, expecting different results. Repeat the same mistakes, different results. That's enough to drive anyone mad, insane. So we're going to see, as we go into this, this, this um, verse 8, 
that we need that God is preparing his church that we are stepping stones to work amongst Gentiles, heathens, Jews we know that Jerusalem still remains the seat of the apostolic wisdom and authority even though the, the, the Jewish leaders, the chiefs of Sanji, you know, even though today they still don't believe a lot of them, but God is going to claim that. That's his promise. He's going to claim that back. You think about um, uh, the Muslim faith, it's probably one of the biggest faiths going. Every knee shall bow, every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. The Bible, the Bible doesn't make promises that it can't keep. Yes, that's Lord. the Muslims. That's the Jews. That's all of them. Every knee shall bow. That every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Our job is to go and preach. Our job is to get into the word of God and go out and preach the word. Tell people about Christ. The love of Christ. Tell people about what Christ has done for us. It's our job. The gospel proclamation is great joy. Mission to the masses. It said there was a great joy. When the gospel has been preached, people will come to Christ. The world joys. The world joys. You know, <laughs> consuming, filthy, degrading, hiding the light of truth. There is no remedy in civilization. The gospel must be preached. Hallelujah. Let's carry on. Uh, 9 to 17. 9 to 25. Uh, who's going to read that for me? Uh, how about Sister Nazarene? Where are you? What do you want me to read from 9 to where? 25. Where's this? 9 to 25. We are in Acts 8, Maxine. Oh. Thank you, Pastor. Thank Acts you. 8, verses Thanks 9 to 25. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks, Pastor. You're welcome. <laughs> now, for some time, a man named Simon had practiced sorcery in the city and amazed all the people of Samaria. He boasted that he was someone great, and all the people, both high and low, gave him their attention and exclaimed, This man is the divine power known as the great power. They followed him because he had amazed them for a long time with his magic. But when they believed Philip, as he preached the good news of the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptised, both men and women. Simon himself believed and was baptised, and he followed Philip everywhere, astonished by the great signs and miracles he saw. When the apostles in Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them. When they arrived, they prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit had not yet come upon any of them. They had simply been baptised into the name of the Lord Jesus. Then Peter and John placed their hands on them and they received the Holy Spirit. When Simon saw that the Spirit was given at the laying on of the apostles' hands, he offered them money and said, Give me also this ability so that everyone on whom I lay my hands may receive the Holy Spirit. Peter answered, May your money perish with you, because you thought you could buy the gift of God with money. You have no power or share in this ministry, because your heart is not right before God. Repent of this wickedness and pray to the Lord. Perhaps he will forgive you for having such a thought in your heart. For I see that you are full of bitterness and captive to sin. Then Simon answered, pray to the Lord for me, so that nothing you have said may happen to me. When they had testified and proclaimed the word of the Lord, Peter and John returned to Jerusalem, preaching the gospel in many Samaritan villages. Amen. This is deep, isn't it? This is absolutely deep. So we see one of the Samaritans was a sorcerer named Simon who used to deceive people. Maxine, your hands up. Yeah, um, I, I was interested because you know when they said, then Simon answered and pray to the Lord for me so that nothing you have said may happen to me. 
I wonder what happened to that man. So Simon asked Peter to pray for him too? Yeah. Yeah. Did, I wonder if they did, because it doesn't say, does it? it, well, it, well, he, it he, he knew in his spirit who he was, a deceiver. He, he, he answered him very, very clearly. To offer money for the gift of God was a terrible thing for Simon to do. Mm -hmm. Yet there are very many people today who think that by giving money to the church, they will somehow win God's favour. See, Simon the sorcerer is demonstration of some of the people in church today thinking that their money is going to save them. Yeah, I know, but I mean, it, they do say that um, offer your tithes and offerings, though, don't they, in church? But he also says, do not bring your tithes and offering if your heart is not right. You're better off leaving it at the door. Matthew 7. Mm. Leave your money behind. We must know the scriptures. We can't just quote one aspect of the scriptures without coming in with the other side of the scriptures. It says, leave your money behind. Mm. Yeah, so if your you. heart's not right, leave mm. your money behind. Not interested. God doesn't want your money. He wants your heart. This is it. Yeah, 100%. So when we see here, we see here, he used to deceive people. So there are many people in the church. There are many people still in church today that are deceiving people. Let's get it right. Mm. This is why you need the spirit of discernment. Deceive the people by whose power did it deceive the people by? Someone want to give me someone to give me an answer. Satan. Thank you. Right. There are people in the church deceiving people by Satan's power. Now he too hears the word. He too deceiving people by Satan's power, but he still hears the word. He too hears the word and believes. He too hears the word and believes and is what? What did he say? What happened to him? He's, um, um, he doesn't want anything that will happen. He was baptised too. Thank you. Thank you, Nazarene. Thank you. We must follow this Bible study if we're going to follow it. And listen. Yeah. We need to listen to what's going on there because we're going to miss it. It's very key information. We need to be in the word of God. Ears open. He followed. Hold on. Yeah. He's under the power of Satan. He hears the word and he's baptised. Look at this process there. Look at this, right? Come on. <laughs> I don't know about you, man, but I'm feeling a bit woo. <laughs> man, we've got to be on our P's and Q's. It says at the end of times in Revelation, many of us are going to be deceived. Mm. Right? So we need to be, again, in the spirit we have to be in the holy spirit we need to be walking with the spirit of god in us so that we can recognize it very very quickly and stamp it out mm. and not get caught up in it now he too has the word and believes and gets baptized in john 4 9 we read that the jews had no dealings with samaritans we read it in John. But Christ had told the apostles to witness to him, not only in their own land, Judea, but also in Samaria. So now hearing of the blessing in the land of the ancient enemies, the apostles go to Samaria. They're an obedience. They're an obedience of God's will. You know, God's told them to do this. They know what they're up against. They're not going in there on a whim. They've got the Holy Spirit in them. They've got the discernment in them. So they know what to expect from the people because the Spirit is guiding them. Yeah? And when so, so it says, so now hearing of the blessing in the land of the ancient enemies, the apostles go down to Samaria, and when they had prayed, God showed 
that he had accepted them also by giving them the gift of the Holy Spirit. You see, the scriptures are showing there that if we really love God, we will love people too. That's what the scripture is showing us there. If we really love God, we will love people. No matter what they do, no matter how they behave, no matter how they act, no matter how, whatever we want to perceive, we will love them. This is what the scripture is showing here. Persecute you, love you. Talk nonsense about you, love them. Talk behind your back, love them. Gossip about you, love them. God showed that he had accepted them by giving them the gift of the spirit and never refused to give them the gospel. We must never refuse to give someone the gospel because we don't like them. Or say, I'm not preaching to that person there. It's not our job. Maxine, your hands up. Oh, sorry. No, I didn't know. Chloe, over to you. It's that obedience, isn't it? It's all about that. It's like God's, God's love. Showing how we love God is us being obedient to God and his word. Amen. We can't love God without following the word. Amen. And that's, you know, he's, he's loving your neighbor. If we've got it in our heart, I'm not preaching to him. Then we need to go. We need to go. We need to go back to the drawing board. Emma, over to you, sister. Good to hear you. Good to have you with us. Yeah, I was just um, <clears throat> the reading the part where it's repent, where he offers the money and he says, you have no part of sharing this ministry. Amen. Because your heart is not right before God. Repent of this wickedness and pray to the Lord. Amen. Perhaps he will forgive you for having such a thought in your heart. But I see that you're full of bitterness and captive to sin. And I love that part because it shows that, like, he is so forgiven. Like, if he, if he prays for his forgiveness, you know, and repents for his sins, he will be forgiven. Amen. You know, and, and he will eventually get that Holy Spirit, you know, and... Um, Amen. Yeah, that, that's just beautiful to me, the way it's written. Amen. You know, we can, for I see that you're full of, because we come here and we are, we are full of bitterness and we are captive to sin. Amen. We are sinners. But Jesus died on the cross for our sins to be given, you know, and um, we, can, we can come with the wrong heart, but God can correct our heart. Amen. You know, and that's the beauty of it. So, yeah, I just, I love that part. Thanks. Amen. Amen. It's, it's so true. He, he offers us repentance. That's really, really, really cool, Emma. You know, it seems wonderful thing that, you know, when we look at this particular scripture that Simon, that the apostles could give the, that they could give the Holy Spirit merely by laying their hands on people. Yeah. The money he had okay. Okay. Was probably received from the poor. So, You've got to look at this guy, Simon. The money that he had, he probably received it from the poor people. And by his former satanic powers. Now he wishes to use this to buy the special privileges of the apostles because he wants it for himself. Peter tells him that unless he repents, his money will perish. So Peter is seeing, he's seeing the, uh, the, the spirit of Bezalel upon the man He's not, he's not going to him, I'll rebuke you. Who, who do you think you are? Ask him for money to buy the Holy Spirit. He tells him straight, repent. Then tells him about the problem. He says, repent, that your money will perish with you. So Simon, what does he do? What does he then do? He asks Peter to pray for him. He, he, this whole turnout of events, is, 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 is quite cool. And, and, and it goes on, to offer money for the gift of God was a terrible thing for Simon to do. Yet there are very many people today who think that by giving their money to the church, they will somehow win God's favour. But eternal life is a gift from God. It's a gift from God. We can't buy our salvation. We can't do it. God wants us to accept the Saviour. He has provided then when we have become children of God, we can bring our gifts to him. 
We can't bring our money unless we bring our heart first. What's the, you, you, there's no point going there's your money and then your heart's all twisted up. Or, or, or you're, you're, you're full of bitterness, you're full of unbelievers, you're full of the devil. You see it? Let's, let's get it right. Churches don't want to talk about it. Here it is there. It, the, the, he's full of it. He's full of his riddles. Riddles. You know, we ain't one of those churches. We will tell, you know, what the gospel says, Bible preach, canonicity. He's full of it. But how do we, how do we cope with that? Repent. Pray for him, please. Isn't that a lovely rebuke? Repent. Can you pray for him, please? Not, you ain't welcome, eh? Bit of unleavened bread will just unleaven it. No, let's, let's, let's have a go. Let's work at this. Let's see what we can do. Let's see if you, you're, you're, you can have that heart transformation because it's available to everyone. Jews, Gentiles, the gospel's preached. Gemma, over to you. Um, yeah, when it talks about that they was, the, the power of Satan was allowing that Simon to perform mighty, mighty miracles. Um, it was saying in this study application, in the early days of the church, there were sorcerers, magicians, and it was numerous and influential, which we see today with all the new age and that. But it says they even worked wonders, performed healings and exorcisms. So sometimes we see that even in the Catholic church, like we see the exorcism. We actually, or I'll see Muslims casting out demons. It looks like they're casting demons out of people. And that always confused me because I was, he says that can, can Satan cast out Satan? It says that somewhere else in the Bible, but actually this is showing me that exorcisms can take place, but it's really the power of Satan. So, so how do we tie that up? Because in another part of scripture, it says, Sorry if I'm confusing, but it says Satan, because they accused Jesus of being Satan because he could cast out demons. And he said, can Satan cast out his own? But according to the, the work of the magicians and whatnot, they can. Well, but it's all deception. Hold on. Satan's got power. Of course he has. Yeah. So what I'm saying is when we see people that may be delivered not under the power of Jesus, but it might look like they're being delivered. It may yeah. not really be. In what way? You need, well, to, you need to be specific with what you're saying here. Yeah. So, so this is, where were we talking about first and foremost? Okay. People getting delivered where? Yeah. So um, verse eight, nine to 11, you know, he, he talks about um, the sorcerers and he was doing mighty things in, my application study breakdown it says in the, the early in the days of the early church they worked wonders performed healings and exorcisms so they were performing exorcism which is casting out devils but it wasn't it was under demonic power so no so that just stood out to me because i was like oh but i mean it's there, it's real you go to you go to haiti you go to any of the african countries voodoo it's all real mate you know it's like you know i went into a crack house one day uh, 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 God, God, my witness, I was in a crack house. There was a bowl of snakes in there, mate. Believe you me, a bowl of snakes in the in the, in the geezer's ass, right? And I tell you what, this crack house, right? You know, if you went from the, if you went from the ground floor to the top floor, you had to go up there in darkness. My God, you did. I, I, I done it once and a few, few times, and it was like in the in the bowl in the bowl. In the bowl, there's all gold and everything. There's money. There's but you when you get into the so when you finally get to the top, and you've actually think there, oh God, Jesus, how did I get through there? You, you, it makes you wait in a room. Yeah, it makes you wait, in, and you're looking at this bowl, and it's got money. It's got Rolex watches. It's got big money, gold chains in there, and you're like that, and you're waiting. Do you know what I mean? And then you got then you then you got a score. And then you've got to make you think, why are you going to get down the stairs alive? You know what I mean? It was demonic influence. This guy never got arrested for four years. Demonic influence. It's real. It's true. It's happening. It's live today. Under the power set. What do you think about, um, this, uh, uh, what's, the, what's the other one? Uh, Luminati. 
So the reason I brought that up is because sometimes, like for example, we where I was church hopping in the earlier days, um, and you they say be very careful who lays hands on you because you might think you're being delivered, but they could be putting more into you. And that's what this is basically saying, isn't it? Which Come is back to that discernment. You know, you, yeah. you, 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 you know what I mean? It's like you, you wouldn't be in a place if you had the spirit of discernment, you'd know, wouldn't you? Yeah, but new believers, this was like when you're just a new baby, you got to be careful. You got to be new, okay? You got to be careful. But you would, you, do you know what I mean? It's like when you, when you walk into a church, you've got to be, you've got to have the spirit of God upon you, haven't you? You know, you've got to be, you know, going to be led. You, you've got to be, there's a lot, there's many been deceived. You think about it, in these African countries, uh, Isaac Abul talks about it very, very, um, very, very clearly where he is in, um, is it in Kenya? He said, it's, he, he said there's a power going on with dark forces and evil. He said, it's just, it's just, it's all, I mean, we, we're lucky, we don't see it. It's, it's a bit more underhand in this country, but it, like there, it's just like, it's like you go from one street to another, it's, it, it's right there in front of you. But yeah, we've got to be careful. And we've got to be careful right now with, um, like you said it as well, new age, all these things, the, the, the influence, you know, the healing. There were loads of healers coming on. Yeah, you know, even some of the tricks they try, what is these, some of these um, hypnosis and all these, these other um, areas that they come in and put healing. These are all, these are all other ways of techniques of these mediums getting into your body. So could I ask one question of how would you handle this then? So in the rooms of recovery, we are with unbelievers that do a lot of meditations. Yeah, that are. So yesterday, a girl that sent me lots of meditations like Tibetan meditation. Would you go back and say, as would you then say, look, I'm a Christian. I don't listen to that stuff. Would you be bold and say it? Or would you just accept someone sending you stuff, but just not say it? What are we supposed to do as Christians? Stand up and say, I can't have that stuff stand firm got stand firm can't deal with it that's dangerous for you mate yeah that's not like i would watch it but I'm, I'm my question is how do you deal you don't want to offend people but you want to bring them the truth yeah you've got you, you got you've got to use wisdom you know you've got to use wisdom but you, you, you i'm sure you know it's like you, you know you know my i always say my faith doesn't allow me to practice this sort of stuff my faith doesn't allow me to practice these sorts. Of and and, and, it's, and now I think that's sometimes when we stand firm in who we are in our faith, you've got to understand when we're, when we're in that double-minded place, people want to throw stuff at you because they get an inkling of the type of spirit that you are. They want to test and approve to see if it's a real one or not. You find, we find that a lot with the world. The world will try and tempt you out. See a real one. Yeah, let's have a look. Some of them know what you're doing before you even start. Their spirits already told them who you are. Draw her in. Remember, the enemy comes to thief, take away, and destroy. He wants to steal, wants to pick off weak believers. We, you know, one of one of Isaac the Bull's greatest teachings is about what Satan's powers and what he's out to do: steal, kill, and destroy. And he'll start with weak believers. That's why it's important that we mature ourselves with a faith. And that's why it's important that we are in connection with our brothers and sisters to kind of like run this thought that through for us. This is why we have that accountability stuff. This is why we have the, that, that, that area where we can come and say, you know, well, what about this? What do you think about that? Like you just did there, Gemma. Do you know what I mean? What, how would you handle that situation? It's important that we do this with our brothers and sisters. It's also important that we kind of like, you know, really be careful of how. Remember, we are of the world, but not in the world. Emma, over to you. Yeah, um, <clears throat> I was just looking at the part where it said, um, then like Simon answered, please pray to the Lord for me so that nothing you have said may happen to me. It was, to me, it's like at that moment he started to fear God, you know, and um, yeah, that's, sorry, that's all I really had, but I just, I just, you know, felt that like, you know, at that moment after, you know, what he, what Peter had answered to him, you know, he, he had that fear of God. He wanted to, he wanted him to pray that nothing would, that he had said may happen to him. Beautiful. So... I get that he probably did repent and hopefully have his journey. 
So we've got two things there. We've, yeah. got to run, we've got to understand there's two spirits going on, yeah, that we need yeah, to be aware hope. of as yeah. believers. We've got the spirit of the world, which those, yeah. who are, those that are depending on, you know, the powers to do the things of the world. And then we've got the spirit of God. We've got to remember they're at war with each other. That's the battle. That's the battle that we're in. Where battle is against the spirit as well. So sometimes when we see the person, it's not the person, it's the spirit behind the person. So this is why the Bible says we must be careful um, that we don't fight against flesh and blood. So you think, oh, he's a really nice guy, but it's the spirit behind him. Mm. Oh, she's a really lovely person, but we've got to be careful of the spirit behind the person. So we've got the spirit of the world and we've got the spirit of God. That's basically, so we're, we're Holy Spirit, spirit-filled believers here as, as, as 11 of us on this platform tonight. We're on, the, we're on the spirit of the Lord. That's the side that I hope we're all on. Do you know what I mean? I know myself, I can vouch for that. That's the side I'm on. I can only speak for myself. Hallelujah. <laughs> you know what I mean? But, but this is what we're up against. The spirit of God against the spirit of the world. So we need to be understanding that Simon represented the spirit of the world in the church. So he was representing the spirit of the world in the church. So you've got to understand that there are believers today representing the spirit of the world in the church. So this is why we say, it. if it's not of the Holy Spirit, I'm not interested. And we've got to discern that. We've got to be able to discern that. This is what we need to be asking in our prayers. Lord, give me the spirit of discernment. In, 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 in NA's principles, in NA's principles, there's only one book that talks about the spirit of discernment. And it, it talks about it when it talks about the spiritual path. There is nothing in the step working guide. There is nothing in the basic text. There is nothing in the how it works. Why? Because it's displaced on the spirit of the world. Go and get my own eye power. That's not a Holy Spirit. Go and choose a God of my own understanding. Great. We get it right. We get to choose Jesus. And now our job is, now that we have got it right, to try and be that example so that when it comes along, when someone sends their Tibetan to meditation, that maybe we can come back with a bit of scripture. Or this is what I do. Or why don't you come and you know, um, come to my church sometime? You know, this is what... Someone showed me, we've got to be brave and bold. Sometimes that could be an opportunity to witness to someone. That person might be just as lost as, as we were when we didn't have Christ. And it's looking and it's searching. So we've got to use our wisdom. You know, and think, whoa, that might be an opportunity for me to get in there. So sometimes we don't always have to shy against it in a way that, oh, it's negative. We have to kind of like try and use it as an opportunity to, to preach the gospel to that person. That's our job. That's our role. So it's really good that we can see that the world's calculations are too much. Simon spirited the mixture of sorcery and faith it had filled with some portions and the true apostolic spirit manifested. We need to be dependent on prayer. That's the only way we're going to be able to really discern and know about these spirits when they come and, and want to attack us, want to draw us out, want to approach us. That's the only way we're going to know is in prayer. In prayer, Lord, help me. The danger of the church is our lackness of discipline. This is what we're lacking. We are lacking disobedience. We're lacking. We're lacking, you know, being in the word. We're lacking in our prayer closet. We're lacking sometimes in the church and our fasting. If you look at the, the, the Muslims, they're rigid. 
Four times a day, they're on that mat. Six times a day, they're on it. Boss, 12 o'clock, bang, the mat's out. Boss, four o'clock, the mat's out again. I love that book, boss. And probably at night again, they're, they're on it. They're with their beads, ching, 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 to the boom, boom, all day. Look, watch them. They give us an example that we can like, we can look to. Some might say it's religious, but we need to look at it as an example that, you know, so as, as Christians, they're in their word, they're in their book, they know the scriptures, they'll have an argument with you, they'll come with analytics, they'll come with apologetics, they're on it. And for us to be able to be even entertaining the conversation, we need to be in our prayer, we need to be in our word, we need to be on our P's and Q's to even have a chance of having a conversation with them. Otherwise, they'll eat you up, chew you up, spit you out. Before you know it, you walked away thinking, oh, I, I need to go back and read my book. Chloe, over to you. Yeah, I was just thinking... Like, yeah, like I've always, I have always looked at um, other cultures and other religions, and 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 it, 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 there is a spirit of a spirit of religion religion on it, but there's also a great respect on it as well. Yeah. But um, but I also there's there's there was this uh, meme that I saw, which really summed up for me, and especially with the new age there was a hamster on a hamster wheel and it had to do all these different stuff like especially in the new age like they've got people wake up they do like 10 affirmations they do like half an hour meditation like they have to do these things to fill an ounce of happiness or whatever it is they're getting from it which isn't much but we can just sit we're so blessed so we can just sit and ask to be in Jesus' presence and he will give us peace. Amen. We don't have to do all these like religious, religious, um, a religious, you know, religious protocols or religious um, affirmations kind of things. We can just ask to be in our Father's presence. So we really need to um, understand that and understand how blessed we are to have that relationship with our Father, with our God. And you know, these people that believe in these gods they don't have no relationship with them amen they have a religion amen and you're quite right but we need to learn from the discipline the discipline you know as a as a as a um as a uh, uh, um, someone who who lived in east london around a lot of muslims the one thing that stood out for me was the discipline the discipline of their faith. And you, even though you knew that they were lost, you had to admire their discipline. You had to admire it. It was like, for me, it stood out like a, a sore thumb. You know, and it's, you know, you know, and it was like, um, we too need to draw from that. We need to draw from that. And, it's, and it's like, as Chloe said, you know, it doesn't have to be religious, but if we're in the word four times a day, then surely that's going to benefit us because it's going to edify us. It's going to transform us. It's going to renew our mind. God is going to reveal stuff to us. If we're praying, if we're praying for others, if we're, you know, you know, doing the things that the Bible tells us to do, then we're going to feel much better. We ain't going to be walking around with spirits of heaviness if we're doing all this sort of stuff, we ain't going to be walking around with spirits of oppression if we're doing all this stuff. It, 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 there's a key to it. It says, my peace, I lead you through my word. The word of God is true. You know, the word of God penetrates. It will penetrate us like a double-edged sword. It gets through to our hearts and our minds. It convicts us. It makes us look at things in different perspective. This is why our calling is totally different to somebody that's in, in the rooms. They won't understand it. They won't understand things like, oh, sex before marriage. Why you can't do that? Because we're, we're so focused on the flesh. 
and pleasing the flesh and please doing the things of the world that we'll just go out so wide. We compromise. We know that when we've received the spirit of God, there's no room for compromisation. The spirit will convict you. It will show you that that's not right. The other day when I wanted to, you know, throttle the guy who wanted to take all my deposit, the spirit stopped me from doing it. And I did. After I've had enough, I wanted, I wanted to go for him. Listen, we need to be in the word to help us in our walk. We need to be in the prayer. Because the enemy is like a roaring lion, seeking place where he can devour. He wants to get in. If we just give him an open door, he's in. The Bible says sin is crouching at the door. It's right here, the flesh. So I think, right, we've 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 been we've gone on such. Any questions? Any more comments on that? And I think eighteen to twenty-five. There's there's a huge. There's a huge part in that. And I'm going to finish on some prayer tonight because I think, you know, it's, it's important. There's, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of stuff going around. We're in new seasons. We're in, we're in new challenges. We're all in different places in our walks. And we, you know, we, we, we want to, you know, the people that we're advancing in our faiths, you know, got some challenges in our lives. Around our children, around our circumstances. And it's tough being a Christian. It's tough living up to the standards of God. We can't live up to them. That's why the 640 Leviticus laws were there. They were put there to show us that we can't live up to them. But we can sow in and press into God. We can ask him to help us. We can ask him to guide us in everything that we do. And which is why the Bible says that we must trust in the Lord our God and lean not on our own understanding. You know, it's great where we're all at. You know, we're all brothers and sisters. We're all, we get challenged, we get difficulties, we get trials. And the enemy's like a roaring lion, you know, wanting to sow cause of division and all sorts of things. And we can get caught up in the flesh. It's important that we stand firm. It's important that we grow together. The Lord has taken us. He's taken us a long way. And we all know but while we're in it, that he's in it with us. He's in the battle with each and every single one of us. And that's the beauty of it. Let's just pray tonight. Let's, we're going to finish up on 18 to 25. We're going to come back where Philip meets the eunuch. And we're going to take it from 25 to 40 next week. Because I think that we can give it some real uh, emphasis on that. Uh, where we can go into Philip's ministry, where we really see the power of God moving, where we really see how God, you know, just makes things happen, where God just places us in areas where he wants us to be in areas so he can use us as vessels so the gospel can be preached. Heavenly Father, we just pray this evening. We just pray. Let's just close our eyes and pray. Heavenly Father, we just pray this evening over each and every single one of us. We just pray for our brothers and sisters, Lord, that, that, that we're talking about the first church. We're in, we're in the last church. We're in the latter days. We just thank you, Lord, as we're in these days, Lord, that we can be unified in the body of Christ, that we, can, that we are called to love and serve each other, Lord. Lord, I just pray that we just, we just continue to, to use each and every single one of us, Lord, to, co to continue to guide us in everything that we do in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I pray today, Lord, 
that no matter where we are in, 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 in our life today, that, that you will help us, Lord, that you'll help us in our difficulties, that you'll help us in our struggles, that you'll help us in everything that, that you want us to do, Lord, that we're called to do, that we're called to do, that, that no plans of the enemy shall prosper right now in the name of Jesus, Lord. We pray that you strengthen us each and every single, empower us with your Holy Spirit, oh God. Thank you, Lord, that you've left us the Spirit, Lord, to guide us, to lead us, Lord, to, to help us, to, 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 to strengthen us, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that the Spirit of the living of your living God is upon each and every single one of us today. No one accepts him to preach the good news of the gospel, to set the captives free. Thank you, Jesus, Lord. Lord, it, empower us with your Spirit, Lord. Give us that fresh anointing today, Lord. Give us that fresh manner, Lord, today, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. We pray for that revival right, right now that's in this world, Lord. We pray for those lost people, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord. We pray that you will guide us, Lord, to help us, that you'll guide us to the person that you want us to speak to, Lord, that you'll position us, Lord. We pray, Lord, for positioning. We pray for positioning to do your will. We pray that we're available, Lord. Lord, we pray that we just concentrate on you, that our eyes are fixed upon you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Help us, Lord. Help us in our difficulties. Help us in our struggles, Lord. We pray today, Lord, that you continue to lift each and every single one of us up in the name of Jesus, Lord. By the power of the Holy Spirit, Lord, help us today, Lord. Lord, we pray around difficult circumstances. We pray around difficult decisions. We pray around difficult people, Lord. We pray that we call to love them, Lord. Help us to, to do your will, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord. Relieve us of that bondage of self, Lord. Take away all of our difficulties, Lord. Oh, God, lie victory over them, Lord. We pray today, Lord. Help us, Lord. Crucify our fleshes, Lord. This is all about you. We just, we just lift your name up high, Lord. Lord, let's just get out of the way, Lord. Father, let, you, let your spirit outpour in front of each and every single one of us. Let our light shine before this broken world in the name of Jesus, Lord. Strengthen us, Lord. Just the way that you strengthened Simon. Just the way that you strengthened Philip, Lord. Just the way that you strengthened Peter, Lord. Just the way that you strengthened Stephen, Lord. Lord, strengthen us. Give us that boldness, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord, by the power of the Holy Spirit, Lord. Holy Spirit, help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. Help us. Strengthen us, Lord. Lord, I pray today, Lord, that if we lift up Sister Chloe, Lord, Lord, we just pray, Lord. We just pray over our situation, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord. That you'll guide her, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, Lord. That she will stand as the light, as a beacon in that family, Lord. In the name of Jesus, Lord. We pray, Lord. We pray, Lord. We, Lord, Lord, we, know, we know what it's like to be outnumbered. Father, we pray today, Lord, that you are with us, Lord. That you'll never leave us or forsake us, Lord. That we draw our strength from you. No matter what, please guide us, Lord, in everything that we do in the name of Jesus, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We pray for Sister Char. We pray for Brother Alan, Lord. We just lift them up, Lord. We pray, Lord, that you continue to bless them and guide them and lead them in, 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 in their journey, Lord. Lead them, Lord, as they, as they prepare for their marriage, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord. We just lift them up to you, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord. Our brothers and sisters, Lord, we just lift them up. We lift up their family. We lift up their beautiful children, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord. We just pray covering over them, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord. We pray for Emma, Lord. We pray that as you've been baptized recently, Lord, that you'll strengthen all of them. We, 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 we pray around their circumstances, Lord. We pray, Lord, as we, as we, as we, as we go to pray this week with her, Lord, that, that you'll lift her out, Lord, that, you, that you'll elevate and you quicken her in her spirit, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord, by the power of the Holy Ghost, Lord. We thank you, Jesus, Lord, for you are with her. We pray for Maxine and Alex, Lord, in the name of Jesus. We lift up Gemma to you right now in the name of Jesus. We lift up Joe, Lord. We lift up her circumstances to you. We lift up, Lord, her, her, her health to you right now in the name of Jesus, Lord. Lord, we, we pray, Lord, that you cover her, Lord, that she'll look to you, seek to you as the author and the finish of her faith, Lord. We pray for Sister Nazarene, Lord. We pray for Nev right now in the name of Jesus, Lord, who's going through it, Lord. We pray, Lord, that your light will be on that situation, Lord, that you'll continue to guide them both in the name of Jesus. By the power of the Holy Ghost, we pray for our brother Leon, Lord. We lift him up to you. We pray for our brother James. We lift him up to you in the name of Jesus. We pray for our brother Malcolm, Lord. We lift him up to you in the name of Jesus. Lord, as you said, you called him in totally different direction. We pray for the men's group tomorrow night. We pray for the women's group tomorrow night. We pray for the ministry, Lord. We pray for the government, Lord. We pray for the churches, Lord. We pray that there'll be unity 
see in the body of Christ, that, the, that those that were deceived will be converted, Lord, in the name of Jesus. We pray for deceivers to be converted and repent and to receive the, receive the power and the infilling of the Holy Ghost, Lord, because that's what we want. We want more people to receive the power of the Holy Ghost. doesn't matter what they're doing. Lord, let them come to you, Lord. Lord, let us preach your gospel. Lord, let us, just, let us be a loving place where we, the, the church will be a place where people belong, Lord, in the name of Jesus. That people want to belong to, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, Lord we just pray. We pray for Fauzia all the way in France, Lord. We pray that you lift her up, Lord. We pray for her family. We pray to strengthen her, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord. Oh, Father God, we thank you, Lord, for those that are not in the ministry tonight. We pray for each and every single one of them. We pray for our marriages. We pray for our partners. We pray that you strengthen them, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Because the enemy is like a roaring lion, seeking place where he can devour. The enemy loves attacking marriages. We pray for marriages on there right now in the name of Jesus, Lord. We thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, we ask you to strengthen those that are in marriage. We ask you to strengthen those that, that, that want to be married, Lord. We strengthen those relationships and those that are not good in relation we ask you to, we pray lord that you'll that you'll find someone because you said two is better than one in the name of jesus lord we pray for those singletons right now in the name of jesus we pray for sister maxine right now we pray for sister Gemma right now we pray for sister fauzia right now we pray for brother leon and his marriage we pray for um, denise right now in the name of jesus lord we just lift up lord our families our marriages lord we lift up our children to you lord right in the name of jesus we need to be a ministry that's praying around the these things, Lord. We need to have a ministry that's praying, that's worried about the cost of living, that more people will come to Christ, Lord, because more people will be drawn out of their comfort zone, that we have a duty today, Lord. We pray, Lord, that you strengthen us, Lord. You pray that we give us the boldness to speak your gospel, Lord, in the name of Jesus, by the power of the Holy Ghost, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, Lord, that you are with us here tonight, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, Lord, that no weapon formed against this ministry shall prosper in the name of Jesus. We pray, Lord, covering over the ministry, Lord, right now, in the name of Jesus. We cover it with the blood of Jesus, Lord, that no weapon, no division will be formed against this ministry, and it shall prosper, Lord, because your ministry will prosper. It's not Ivor's ministry, it's your ministry. ministry we lift up, Lord, we lift up. We lift up, we lift up your ministry, Lord, in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Jesus, Lord, that you are with each and every single one of us. We thank you, Father God. We thank you, Father God, for what you're doing. We thank you, Father God, that, that you're equipping us. We pray for that spiritual maturity, that we can move. We can move in faith, Lord. That we can move. We can move. We can continue moving in our faith, Lord. The Lord, that we that we just break down yokes of immaturity right now in the name of Jesus. We pray, Lord, the theme this week of obedience, Lord, that we can be obedient to your word, that we can have courageous conversations with our brothers and sisters, that we can learn to love, that we can be open with our feelings, we can be open with our offenses, we can be open with each other, Lord. And then we can we can do it in the right way. We just pray, Lord, that you that you that you just open our hearts to receive you, Lord, as brothers and sisters in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray that we banish any big we banish any backbiting we banish any gossip lord we banish those things that are not of you right now in the name of jesus lord thank you lord that we cover this ministry right now in the name of jesus by the power of the holy ghost lord we come to you in unity and strength lord to help us guide us lead us direct each and every single one of us lord because we're called to love each other lord thank you lord that we that, that we don't we don't allow satan to interfere with the work of the gospel lord that, that we're called to preach the canonicity of the bible today that the bible is will and the bible is truth and lord let us just be, let, let us be in a standard where we can live by it lord that we all we don't we know we all fall short of the glory of god that we can come right now and repent right now let's all repent right now of the things lord that we want to that we want to come to to repent of our father god father god we just we just come to you right now lord lord we know we're not perfect lord but we know we do things sometimes that are wrong lord Lord, we know we sometimes do things that might upset you, that might upset somebody else, Lord, but we come together in one body, in one faith, together in unity. Lord, and we just lift it up to you tonight, Lord, Lord, that there'll be no division among each of any one of us. As we come to you today, Lord, that we ask your spirit to dwell amongst us today, Lord. Lord, we just eradicate anything that's not of you. We break it off right now in the name of Jesus. We break it off right now. Enemy, you have no place in this place. You have no foothold over anyone right now. I release your burdens right now in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray, Lord, that, 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 that there's, there's no unforgiveness in our hearts right now, that we leave this meeting tonight 
pure and, 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 and in you, Father. Lord, that we can come to you, that we can come to you, Lord, that we can come to you with a clean and contrite heart in the name of Jesus. So our prayers can be heard, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, Lord, that we can come to you. You said you come to you, come to you with a clean and contrite heart, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for, for our brothers and sisters. Thank you, Lord, that we can grow together. Thank you, Lord, that we can love one another. Thank you, Lord, that we can continue to help and support each other. Thank you, Lord, that we don't always get it right. Sometimes we get it wrong. We make mistakes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, Lord, that you, you're not worried about mistakes, but you're worried about our hearts. Thank you, Jesus, that we bring our hearts to you tonight. We bring our hearts to you tonight. Not our flesh, we bring our hearts to you tonight, God. We come with our hearts to you, Lord. Lord, we leave our heart to you right now. Search our hearts right now. Search our hearts now, Lord. Search our hearts right now. Search your heart right now. Search your heart. Put your hand on your heart. Search your heart right now in the name of Jesus. Oh, Lord, we come to you, Lord. We come to you with a heart, Lord. Lord, and if there's anything that's not right, Lord, cleanse us, purify us right now in the name of Jesus. Let us not come back, to, you know, you know, as we, as we come out and we go into our own prayer closet with you, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that we can come right standing with you so that we can hear from you, that there's no blockage right now. In the name of Jesus, we thank you. We thank you for the beauty of, of being able to stand together. Lord, we know what happens when we stand together. <laughs> because you are building up an army. Satan wants to destroy an army, but we know that you are building up an army. We thank you that you'll continue building, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that we'll continue seeking, Lord. And we thank you, Lord, that the devil, the prowl of the roaring lion will have no way in there. No way. Thank you, Jesus, as we come tonight. As we come tonight in unity and strength in the body of Christ, we thank you, Lord, that we come in unity. We come as unity. We come as a package. We don't come as a singleton. We come as a unity, as a body. We thank you, Lord, as we are for the body, for the arm, the leg, the eyes, the head, the shoulder, the all aspects that we work together in one, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, that you bring us together, Lord. Oh, Lord, let us shine our light out there. Let us shine our light in 12-step fellowship. Let us shine our light in the world. Let us shine our light in there. Strengthen us to shine our light in this wicked world, Lord, oh God. And we thank you, Lord, that we, that we pray for the spirit of discernment, Lord, that we can know, Lord, that we can know that we can know what's true and what's wrong. We can know what's right and what's wrong. That we can discern the truth for ourselves, Lord. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord, that you continue to guide us, Lord, in everything that we do, Lord. We pray for your strength over us right now, Lord. Strengthen each and every single one of us in our household, Lord, in our families, Lord, in our children, Lord, in our marriages, Lord, in our communities, Lord, in our church, Lord, strengthen us, Lord. Oh, Lord, strengthen those around us. Strengthen our communities. Strengthen our government, Lord. Strengthen those around the world. Strengthen those that are persecuted, Lord. Strengthen those that are lost, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord. Lord, let us come together in unity and strength, Lord, in the body of Christ. Oh, God, we pray, Lord. We pray that your vision, your, your vision, Hallelujah. Your vision in this one, as we say, our Father, let's all do it, our Father together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom heaven, come. Be thy name. Your will be done. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Oh, no, oh, no, as it is in heaven. Is in heaven. Give, give us the day. daily bread mm. as we forgive those who sin against us, but Amen. lead us not into temptation, Amen. but deliver us from evil, from God is the kingdom and the power and glory forever and ever. Amen. 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 Let's just go in unity. Let's go in unity in peace. He says, my peace I give you. My peace I leave you. Not the peace of the world. I want peace. Peace with our brothers and sisters. Peace in our minds. Peace in our hearts. I pray for peace. Lord, I pray for peace around the world. I pray for peace in our communities. I pray for peace in our church. I pray for love. Listen, we can all, we're all going to go around and we're going to see what's wrong with that or what's wrong with that. But what can we do? My, you know, what can we do? What can we do to contribute? What can we do? we all got our eyes open. What are we giving? What are we contributing? Let's stand up and be counted. Father, I pray, Lord. I pray that each and every single one of us can stand up and be counted for you. That your name be glorified. 
that your church be glorified. Let there be no division among us, Lord. Let there be none. Let us be a, let us be a body that, that, that focuses on stamping out division and rooting it out in any shape or any form. Because it's not biblical. It's not biblical. It's not biblical. Just stamp it out. Stamp it out. It's like we need to we need to have a new forum now. You know, like in you know, like in the racism one. Let's kick it out. Let's stamp out division. Let's stamp it out in the church. I think we should go around with a banner around all the churches. Let's stamp out division. And let's come together in the body of Christ. Stamp out denominations. Let's come together in the word of God. Stamp out secondary matters. Because it don't matter. What matters is the two greatest commandments. That we love the neighbours, we love our friends, and we love our brothers and sisters. The two greatest commandments of all. We love the Lord our God, and we love our brothers and sisters. That's what counts. He said all the rest hinge upon those two. We don't love, we don't love God. Similar as that. So help us, Lord. Help us to love each other. Help us to grow in each other. Help us to try and understand and consider. Consider this number. It says consider. Consider this in Hebrews 11. It means study people. Let's try and get to understand. Listen, we all fall short. Let's not hold it against each other. Father, we just bless each and every one of us tonight. We come before you in this place. We thank you as we look forward to the rest of the meetings this week in love, peace, and unity, and in the spirit of you. In Jesus' mighty name tomorrow. I hope these small groups tomorrow will be elevated. I'm looking forward to James with my brothers Leon and Malcolm. Hallelujah. Looking forward to the men's group tomorrow night. And there are two women's groups, I believe. Is that one at 2.30 and one at 8pm, ladies? Yeah, there is. Amen. Chloe? Yeah. And Leon, are you going to do your, your when's your one? Yeah, yes, yeah, tomorrow. Tomorrow what time, Leon? Are you talking about scripture? No, I'm talking about... Sorry, well, I, didn't, I didn't hear what you said then, sorry. Okay. Say that again. What time is your group tomorrow? It's 6 30, 6 30 okay. evening. Amen. Can I invite yeah. you girls and ladies to, you know, send your scriptures out and send your um, invitations out? You know, it's your responsibility, it's your groups. So let's get it in early and let's, let's get out and let's build. It's revival. Let's get out and sow. Let's get out and preach the gospel. Let's get out and invite someone. Let's get out and ring them up. You're coming to my group tomorrow night. We're going to be breaking bread on the word of God. We're in this particular scripture. Come and join us. Come on. Get out there and preach the gospel, guys. God bless you all. Have a blessed evening. Go blessed coming in. Go blessed coming out. Blessed coming out. Amen. Amen. God bless you all. Have a good evening. Thank you, Ivor. Good night. Bye. Good night. Thank you. Thank you, Ivor. Bless you all. Have a good rest. Sleep well. Amen. Amen.